Phil Foden. Thoughts on his game in the derby? Thoughts on him this season? Thoughts about his place within world football at the moment? I think Derby Day really highlighted where Phil Foden stands in this team right now. I think he's he's obviously, we call him star boy. Anyway, he's, like, he's our star guy. It's meant that he's a City fan and come through the academy and everything. Sometimes players, you don't know how far they're going to get to. They look like talents, then they kind of get capped somewhere and you're like, yep, yeah, that's kind of, they've not really achieved it. Phil Foden is continuing to achieve uh, where we can't, what we expect from him. He looks mint. And I think a lot of it is he's sponged from all these mint players like Kevin mm. De Bruyne, Davis Silva. He's had all these, these players around him to learn from. Like uh, The finish against United yeah. was Leroy Sane-esque. Like, yeah, do you yeah. know I mean, the things like that, he's learned from a lot of players. Um, I think this season has been incredible. 18 goals, 10 assists, his best season at City so far. And I expect this to go a lot, a lot further for him. I, I think he's going to have a great year. I think by the time it comes to the end of the season... We'll be pointing to Phil Foden and as he had a massive, massive part to play in, in us winning anything. Yeah. Should win things this year. Yeah. Is is he a star boy anymore or is he a star man? Star man, and he is a star is man. A star? I think he's a star man. Yeah. I, I said um, to you before that I, I think of Phil Foden sort of having two really crucial seasons thus far in his career, which to me were are this season where mm -hmm. I feel like he's really arrived and yeah. actually stapled himself as not just a rising star, not just a talent, but like a mainstay. He is now a world-class yeah. player. He's not just, oh, he's got the potential. It's the we're seeing it. He's we're here now. actually seeing yeah, it, yeah. yeah. He is currently the best player in the best team in the world. Which is mad, which is, I think. Which is mad. Uh, so I think of this season, and I think of the 2020-21 season, the COVID season, where he sort of like arrived, he burst onto the scene, as yeah, the Richards yeah. would say. He had, you know, that goal against Dortmund in the quarterfinal of the Champions League. He had winners against Brighton. He won PFA Young Player of the Year. Like, that was sort of that initial season. Then he had one, two, two and a half seasons where you had all the media going, well, what is his best position? Why is he not starting for England? You know, is he going to fulfil his potential? Is he stalling a little bit? Why is he in and out of the City team? And now at just the age of 23, and that's the thing that I think people sometimes forget about Phil Foden. I think he's been around for ages. He's been around for like six seasons. Yeah, it's been time that he's been about. He's 23. 23 years old. He's 23. Old. Like, if, if, you know, if I was cooking a player in the oven... The perfect time to take them out and expect them to be ripe and ready is 23, 24. Like, that's when I want that player it's, to be reaching their potential, which is what we're seeing from him now. It's so crazy because he still feels like that youngster in the team, but he's, he's one of our senior starters. Like, I, I feel like that comes down to like almost like a parental um, feeling that the fans have towards him because we've seen him grow up. It's like yeah. pa parents never see their, their kids as yeah, adults. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, they that's always it, still that's see it. them as that, that little boy or he's the ball boy he's the ball boy <laughs> he's, he's that ball boy, boy. It's it. but he's not anymore he's not he? he's not he's, he's, he's a world class talent and currently the best team in a star studded squad yeah and I think what really summarises that is that there's there's early talk maybe mainly amongst Man City fans but early conversations of him potentially being a Ballon d'Or candidate what are mm -hmm. your thoughts on that do you think that's actually something realistic do you think that's just overhyped well, my, my Ballon d'Or thoughts kind of went out the window last year because of Harlan getting robbed. Um, <laughs> is in how much you respect it as a trophy. <laughs> yeah, so I don't, I don't respect it too much. But uh, having said that, I'd love it if Phil Fordham was that first one to, to win a Ballon d'Or for City. Yeah. City uh, it'd be so sick to see a City player win the Ballon d'Or. Yeah. And I think Phil Fordham has the ability to do that. I still, he's not hit his ceiling by any stretch of the imagination. There's still so long to go. If you look at players in their peaks around 27, 28, Phil Fawn has got so much to go and the more he stays under Pep, the better. But sometimes I feel like, I feel like City fans sometimes are too modest with our stars. I feel like sometimes we don't puff out our chest enough and say, this player demands the respect. Yes, they mm. play for Man City, which I know a lot of the wider media don't love, but they are absolute stars. I mean, because the comparison that I'm trying to draw here is that the person who's getting the most Ballon d'Or shouts early on this season is Jude Bellingham. Mm -hmm. Young English player, plays in the same position as Phil Foden. Obviously, I know football's a game that we watch with our eyes, not just on this um, statistically, but same number of goals and assists as Phil Foden. So they're, they're, they're pretty much taking each other pound for pound this season in terms of how they're contributing mm -hmm. to each other's teams. Obviously, Jude Bellingham is at Real Madrid, one of the most respected clubs in world football. Phil Foden's at City, a club that people seem to love to hate. 
But actually, like, is it ridiculous to say that Phil Foden's been as good as Jude Bellingham this season? Why Why is it so standard to say Jude Bellingham behind all this year, but not, but not f- Phil Foden? Yeah. Why? Why? When they're why? both putting in incredible performances. They're, why, both, they're both doing bits. Why should we feel ashamed to say... Why can't Phil we? We, should, we should have our chest out. Hmm. We should just as it feels like half the world. You know I mean, it feels like all the football is on Jude Bellingham's side hmm. in this. There'll be the whole all, oh, but Phil Foden plays for City, but he's playing for Real Madrid. Yeah, he's playing for Real Madrid. He's playing, for, he's playing in a great side. Like, yes, he's he's doing bits and he's he's coming in clutch. Well, that's, but so was Phil Foden. Well, that's the thing is, and no disrespect here, but you you're not really necessarily going to get seen in the Ballon d'Or eyes of the world if you're playing for. Doncaster are you like you've got to yeah. play for a big team you've you have got to, to play on the, the world clubs. stage yeah. so you can't go oh he's playing for Man City of course he's going to go, get goals and assists it's like, well, yeah. Well, well, like yeah you can't have bold anyway <laughs> yeah to an extent but that, that's sort of the way that it is you know it's just um, I, I don't think it's a ridiculous conversation to have and also I think that a lot of this is to be decided over the coming months if Phil Foden ends the season with another Champions League or a fourth Premier League in the row and he's continued to contribute, continued to be a mainstay, scored and turned up on derby days in the running for titles, scored winning goals throughout the course of a season, then why should he not be there? Mm -hmm. If Jude Bellingham does finish the season without a trophy, does he still deserve deserve the shouts? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. what's, What's your minimum? Phil Ford and like to, to win a Ballon d'Or. What was the minimum he'd have to win? I think I, for, for me, I, I'd be choosing Prem and Champions. If we City going win the Prem and Champions League, and he's had a say in it, and obviously getting keeping his numbers going forward now, I think Prem and the Champions League, and Phil Ford had a, a big part to play in all of the, the which we already know he has in the Prem, but in the Champions League as well. I think that puts him right up there. Thing is, though, is it like we know from this season just gone by that what should happen and what will happen are two completely different things because Mm -hmm. let's say a Bayern Munich or a PSG win the Champions League so neither of Real Madrid and Man City and Man City go win a fourth Premier League in a row and Real Madrid win the La Liga people will still be saying Jude Bellingham people will still go oh well Jude Bellingham he's won the La Liga but they'll discredit Foden for City for for winning the Prem I mean that's my opinion at least that's what I think we won a treble last year with Haaland and people were still saying Messi. Uh, for a seven-game tournament, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is wild. I know, I know. It, it is absolutely insane. Well, that's, that's the Ballon d'Or for you. Like, you, you, yeah. you can't predict it. It's it's just... I, I think, personally, Bellingham and Foden are two players that both deserve to be up there. Now that the mantle has passed from, from you know, Ronaldo yeah, and Messi, yeah. it's time for these younger players to step up and yeah, I think yeah. these are the two of the brightest stars in, in the world. And, yeah, and th- this whole conversation is absolutely no disrespect for Jude Bellingham. Because no, he's, he's incredible. Unbelievable. Like, I'd have him oh, at City like, like that. Oh, in a heartbeat. You, you'd you said if you could sign any player right, right now, you'd take yeah, Jude, Bellingham. Jude Bellingham. Yeah, and I'd probably be the same. Like, he is ridiculous and I'm not saying at all that he doesn't deserve it as much as Phil Foden. I'm just saying Phil should be in that conversation. There's Definitely. no reason why he shouldn't. 